I know you was like, is that him? And I was like, yeah, what? What happened to his head? Yeah. Which he's been solid for him coming off the bench. He's been a solid player for him. And, and well, he, 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 he was suspended last year. Mm-hmm. I knew in the playoffs. Yeah. And they were really looking for him to come off the bench last year. So right. now now they got him coming this year. Yeah, solid. So I, I, I like what Mike Carter provides from a point where he can just control the pace and kind of match the, the production level of, or a little bit of a Stephen Curry because if you have an outrageous – a production amount versus Steph Curry, that you at least want to try to get forty percent of that back. Is what I personally, my my own opinion, how I see it. But to me, I, now Memphis got the split. Then you see Golden State getting it back even over over there in Memphis when they come back to California. And they'll win one. Yeah, they'll 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 win one back in Memphis, and it, it, it's going to be a grinder. It, mm-hmm. it it I just think the series is going to be a grind it out, and this is the one that's going to test Golden State. And I think it wears them down enough to whoever they meet in the in the finals is going to end up getting them because it's going to wear them down so much. Gotcha. All right, let's move on and and talk about the Houston and, and the Clippers series. But first of all, Blake Griffin dominance. Yeah, in this in the two games he played against against the Houston Rockets, thirty points, fourteen point five rebounds. I mean, let's talk about this and. Have you noticed the games that you did, probably the highlights that you did, I don't know if you catch anything, but even from the last series, too, to now, I'm sure you can probably see. Is there anything different you notice about Blake Griffin at all? This is the Blake Griffin everybody's been wanting to see. This is, and this Blake Griffin is actually taking, he's taking control a little bit, especially with Chris Paul out there running the offense through him. Mm-hmm. So this is, it, it, it's a, he, he's finally doing what everybody wanted Blake Griffin to do. He's found his little jumper that he's got. Mm-hmm. He's taking it to the hole, but he's showing that leadership that's, that you wanted to see out of him too. So yeah, I like I like what you say about that. Blake Griffin to me is has been one of those guys that is a little overzealous when he goes to the paint, a little bit of acting and uh, maturity was there. He was playing about wrestling, he didn't get calls, anything like that. To me, what I see from Blake Griffin is someone that is stepping up to the to the plate now with. You know the head guy in charge down. You know Chris Paul can get you only in certain places, but you need that next guy that can get you to to where you need to go. And like you said, Blake Griffin is supposed to be that guy, and he's playing like it so far. Mm-hmm. Blake Griffin, uh, even when I watch a few games, he's even passing the ball pretty well. There's been a few times when going into the halftime, he led the team in assists, and so you know this is making it easier for your players like as far as Jamal Crawford and JJ Redick. Um, I'm know. just tired of watching that damn series. <laughs> foul, 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 foul. Brick, 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 brick. So talk about that. And not only can you foul Howard, you can foul Josh Smith. <laughs> yeah. Foul, 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 brick, 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 brick. You pick which one you want to foul, and they're going to throw a brick. And they don't even get me started on Jordan. Gee, man. Yeah, so, Christmas. well, let's talk about it. Yeah, Dwight and DeAndre Bowden inside the paint and the free throws there. You kind of emphasize on that. So, uh, these, if they get the ball anywhere near, just foul them. Just grab them. <laughs> Don't let them shoot. Just, just, just grab them. Like I'm about to grab my son who keeps eating my sunflower seed. <laughs> I like the battle. I, I mean, as far as the whole fouling thing and, you know, the first game they, they did it where it was funny because apparently I, I, I read somewhere that both coaches agreed not to do the hack of thing. Both, yeah. And, yeah, as soon as it happened, they went ahead and fouled their guy. So. The funny part was they were laughing about it. Yeah, they were laughing about it. So it's like, well, you, you got two of the worst free throw shoes on the team. Then you add in Josh Smith, like you said earlier. But Who's this, worse than Dwight. Yeah, which is worse than Dwight. And, uh, but besides this, this is two of the most athletic big men in the NBA right now. That you have the Andre is averaging like three blocks. They the White's can't got four. Shoot no, they they cannot shoot free throws. But what they mean on the other side of the ball for their respective teams is very important. I see a few shots where these, some of these players just trying and think they had a layup. But both of these guys are really athletic. Yeah, it seems very important. But if they're that important, they should learn how to shoot free throws so they're there for their team at the end of the game. I agree. So you when like, it hurts them the most. Oh yeah, that's why you got to take them out and. And you ain't got to worry about game plan for them. And because, like you said, when you take these guys out, the end of the game, you lose that. At the rebound. end of the game, they're more of a liability than anything. Oh, yeah. and, and, it, and it kills you because you got to take them out. 
and that's when the game goes all the cluster because you'll got another six foot ten guy mm -hmm. on one team that can go get the rebounds, put it back, but he can shoot free throw. Yeah. And it it, it you learn how to shoot the free yeah. throw. It's not hard. It's right. the easiest shot in basketball besides the layup. Right. Which half of y'all miss those too. <laughs> but I I'm liking the battle because DeAndre Jordan was literally a a uh, candidate for defensive player of the year, the year, even though he won the Kawhi Leonard, respectfully because of what he does on the boards and as far as defensive inside the paint. The same as Dwight, I know he had an injury at the early year, and uh, he's coming out looking like real agile, real quick, like he did, you know, some few years back in Orlando. And a lot of people on Twitter are talking, about, oh, Orlando Dwight, and I said it too, they but it, it, it was it was uh, it, 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 it becomes once it's a once a show thing. Orlando has to get mentioned. No <laughs> so, um, well, like I said earlier too, I know I'm going to another Orlando reference is that I feel like I was watching the Orlando Clippers versus the Los Angeles Magic. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so, but none. Of, but back to the point is that these are, beside their free throw shooting. Uh, it's, it's pretty fun watching them on defense battle. And you're right, they need to hit their free throws so they can become a major impact in the, in the clutch moments of, mm -hmm. of the game. So. At the end of the game, it just goes away. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, any other player on the Clippers you want to give credit to? Because they – they, I want to say they earned that game because a lot of people was counting them out, playing Houston, and thought Houston's going to go up. Like the, guy, like the guy next to me. Yeah, right here. I raised my hand. Uh, Houston also played that way as well, too, and – and even in the halftime in game two, they was down. I turned off the t. I turned off the game and went to bed. I was like, I'm not watching this because I'm thinking Houston going going to lose. And they, James Harden came out with 32 points and ended up winning the game for him. But uh, any of those Clipper players that you want to look at too, that that would be vital to this series without Chris Paul. Chris Paul will return. We'll discuss his return. But any player that you think of, as far as like you need to have an impact besides Blake Griffin. Well, Blake Griffin needs to have the impact. Blake, Blake Griffin needs to be the guy to have the impact. Because mm -hmm. right now he's their best player. Yeah. Without Chris Paul on there. Look yeah. at the Cab game the other night. Mm -hmm. They went and, and poop game two. What happens? Your best player took over and you end up beating the hole. He's not out of it. Yeah. So you have to have your best player show up and play ball. And he's the one that's going to have be the key. Especially until Chris comes back. Yeah. My, the players I want to give credit to. I give it a two for the Clippers because there there's been there's been moments where Blake get into the paint off his uh off his post move, mid post moves, and was able to find an open shooter and give credit to Jamal Crawford and JJ Ray for hitting these shots. They're both are averaging, I believe, like eighteen and fifteen points respectively in the series so far. So as Blake Griffin is dominating inside the paint and doing what he does in the mid post game. They're opening up for him when he when they're trying to collapse on him. Get the shots to give him that room where he's got an option. To, you know, he just got to dribble or pass it for the open man on the shot. So until Chris Paul can come back and actually do a little bit of that and more for you. Um, now Chris Paul is supposed to come back for Game Three. That's what I heard. I haven't heard his stats clear yet, but they still got him as probable. He was doubtful. If they would have lost Game One, he would have came at Game Two. Mm -hmm. They won game one. They gave him some extra rest because they didn't need game two as much. Yeah. So they rested in game two as well, and then he come back in game three. But believe me, if they would have lost game one, he would have been back game two. <laughs> so it was you, just good for him. He they won game one. Now, the weekend we both made our picks, and you picked the Clippers, and I picked the Rockets. Your pick is looking pretty good right now. I know. And and um, so I mean, give there's me the reason why I picked them. <laughs> so, now with, they got to win without Chris Paul. What, what results do you expect to see with Chris Paul? I mean, I know you expect wins, but, I mean, as far as him playing against, who, Jason Terry on the other side of the ball? He's so sorry, yeah, Jason Terry. <laughs> I hate Jason Terry. <laughs> There's a lot of guys in the league I hate, but he, he definitely won them. He's on the top of the list. Oh, yeah, he's right up there. Him, Patty Mills. Mm -hmm. Who else is there? That I really, really don't like. I can't get through all of them now. Paul Pierce won, right? Yeah, oh, dad, dad, yeah, 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 definitely. I know, I know you don't like Paul Pierce. You said that numerous of times. Yeah, so. Definitely, Paul Pierce can. <laughs> Paul Pierce can slip on a bar of soap for all I got gotcha. you. All right, Chris Paul is back to me as well as as Blake Griffin's been showing up this series. Chris Paul is on a mission as well to prove this. You know, er, everybody keeps talking about it. he hasn't even yet got to a a conference finals yet. 
And right now, it seems like this team is definitely on the mission. Uh, they got a – I know they had the whole owner, you know, Donald Sturgeon thing that happened to him last year. Now you got a different owner to Steve Ball. Now you got an El Nutso owner. Who's on the sidelines cheering and everything like that. And he's very freaking supportive. nuts. Oh, yeah. He's, he's like that at his uh, – whenever he holds the seminars, too, for Microsoft. He's, he's, like, he's, he's like, the same way. He runs around in circles. I'm, like, looking at this guy like, how old are you? He's like an anti-yelling at ref. Mark Cuban. No, exactly. He's just constantly running in circles. This guy's a full, of en- full of energy. So, my thoughts on Chris Paul. I, I like his games for him to, to actually go ahead and expose Jason Terry and, and their. Uh, this would have been a fun matchup to watch with him and Beverly. Just depends on healthy, how healthy. Yeah, he is when he is coming back. But I mean, if you're a basketball fan, you already know what Chris Paul can do. One of the guys, one of the best passing guards in the league, and. Actually, can defend pretty well from the position. Let the league still a couple of years. Even though he'll still be there, though, I think they still are going to run mm-hmm. their offense through Blake like they've been doing. And they should. Mm-hmm. And they should. And then this is where I would pick and choose my spots to go to Chris Paul maybe in the fourth quarter <laughs> and see if they can. Uh, maybe like what he did against, I don't know, we got like <laughs> game seven against the Spurs. <laughs> Something like that, so. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting a healthy, a, a fun. This would be a fun series to watch Chris Ball returning, and and um, we'll 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 see. And I know he's probable right now, and they they got the split, so I'm pretty sure they get back. And hey, maybe they might rest him again and see how this go. And then game four, he just comes back and play. I wouldn't be surprised if they get another win. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If they if they play without Chris Ball, they got the split. He's still like he's still like a little tender in, in, in the hamstring. Yeah, he'll be there for the game three. Uh, he, he's yeah. going to be in for game three. So, yeah, I, I have no mind. So I got him in there, too. If they would have won game two, <clears throat> he wouldn't have played game three. <laughs> I, I'm with you. They would have rested him as long as possible. They'd have been like, yeah. <laughs> Go on back over there. Oh. All right, the Atlanta Hawks versus the Washington Wizards. The series tied 1-1. I, I, I don't know what to say more about this series here, but I, I want to ask you, when would a regular season Atlanta Hawks show up to the party? <laughs> now, because John Wall's out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that, because John Wall, like you said, is out. He could be possibly out for the rest of the playoffs because he has five I... non dis, displaced fractures in his left wrist and hand. And the Wizards are now seeing multiple opinions from... Because, but they can't do nothing because it's so. They said it's so swollen that they can't even. They can't even look at it. Yeah, they say because it's so swollen. Fell in and game one, and and uh, it just became worse. And they held him out for game two, and now this possibly can do that now. Is this just a lucky break for the Hawks that because wow, pun intended. <laughs> I didn't really mean a pun, but I mean this this. Honestly, it looked like Washington can, can win this series. Not now. Not now. Not without John yeah, Wall. Not, not yeah. without John Wall. Yeah, I don't think they can do it with, without John Wall. Even though Bradley Bill's putting on a show, but I don't think they can do it without John. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. John Wall's impact. It was a to tough me, break. John Wall's impact to me is someone who is definitely one of the fastest guards in the NBA. Uh, this guy can create for others. You see, he's been better at. You know, finding his teammates, everything like that, and and yes, he's got a a, a sidekick <laughs> with with uh, Bradley Bill. Usually, women whisper sweet nothings in your ear. Uh, my wife just whispers, "You know, killer whales kill humpback whales." <laughs> That's but, married life for you. You yeah. don't you don't get sweet nothings whispered in your ear no more. You get killer whale stories. <laughs> but yeah, you talking about Bradley Bill? He's got twenty four points, six and four this series. Um, we talk about Bradley Bill and what he brings. This will be his coming out. This is this is his coming out party where everybody notices Brad, especially with John Wall being out. But I don't mm-hmm. think they can. I don't think they can get over that hump without John Wall, especially against a Hawks team that if they show up, they're really really tough to beat. Yeah, I mean they are, and this this, this Atlanta team is it's got to be frustrating for for fans to watch because. No, this this is what everybody's comparing to a San Antonio Spurs s. I don't want to sit there and and uh, give them that much credit, <laughs> even though I know Mike Budenholzer came off that coaching tree. 